So over the past few weeks to a month now, I've had some growing concerns about Fallout 76's future. And before we really dive into this, I don't mean a complete doom and gloom sense of, oh no, the game is going to be completely dead or get abandoned by Bethesda. But rather, now as Fallout 76 is about to cross the three years old mark, the game is still facing some major issues. Some aspects are simply getting stale, and where things are headed next is a bit concerning to me. I don't think the game is going anywhere, but I think the larger community interest in the game is definitely dwindling, and I'm not sure that's going to get rectified soon, when even just recently we saw a pretty big moment where the project lead of the game did step down. So in this video, I want to go over some of these recent thoughts, some of the factors that go into my feeling around this, and just overall where I think Fallout 76 might be headed and why that isn't necessarily super exciting for all of us. Although before we get into that, I have talked recently about how there's been some monetization or demonetization issues on the channel, but thankfully, I do want to say a big thank you to Star Trek Fleet Command for sponsoring this video. Star Trek Fleet Command is a completely free-to-play mobile open-world strategic MMO available right now on both iOS and Android. This game is truly ingrained in the Star Trek universe. You'll be able to see a ton of familiar faces and even do a wide variety of missions for them. During this, you'll be able to unlock and even upgrade some of your favorite ships, and with this, actually recruiting some of the most notable Star Trek characters to your crew that give you unique upgrades. But one of the cool parts about this game is you really are a character here too. The game features a full-fledged open world to explore and traverse, so you can freely move around going to different systems, facing off different enemies, and sometimes even enemies that you probably shouldn't be fighting. This world is crawling with various factions that you can choose to either help or fight against, and as a backbone to this all, you also are going to have your own fully customizable space station. Star Trek Fleet Command is completely free to play on iOS and Android, and you can use my link in the description down below to download it now. So one of the first big things, and one of the things to really inspire this video to a degree, was some of the departures at Bethesda. Over the past few months, you've seen several notable employees leaving the company overall, but one of the biggest occurred just a few weeks ago, and that was when Fallout 76 Project Lead did leave Bethesda. This is someone who worked on Oblivion, Fallout 3, Skyrim, Fallout 4, and of course was the head or lead on Fallout 76. And as it stands right now, we don't know who the project lead is on Fallout 76 or even if a replacement has been selected. That certainly isn't super odd. It's not like this is a super public role and them not announcing a replacement immediately doesn't surprise me. I wouldn't be shocked if it's just at the next event someone comes out with the title, but this is still interesting. On one hand, Jeff Gardner was the lead with the failed launch of the game. Fallout 76, as I'm sure many of us remember, was rolled out in a less than ideal state, but I think a lot of us do have this almost feeling that Bethesda or the larger company of ZeniMax wanted this game out. And of course, we don't actually know what was going on behind the scenes, but it's always kind of been my feeling that the people actually working on the game probably knew it wasn't really ready. It's not like they were saying, oh yeah, we're all good here. So although he was the project lead of the launch of the game, he was also the project lead when the game kind of made that comeback. With the turnaround in 2019 and leading to 2020 with Wastelanders and and onward, and I feel like this improvement with Fallout 76 has actually aged super well. When you look at other games that also had failed launches, like Cyberpunk or Anthem, I think Fallout 76 in the first year and a half did a lot more than those two, in particular Anthem. So in this video, I want to speculate too much on people's employments, but this is certainly a notable thing that just happened, and we'll definitely be returning to it after I talk about some of these other points. With Fallout 76, it seems like 2021 overall will seemingly be one of the latest year as far as content goes. The content we did get has largely been really solid, that's not to say that there have been bad updates in 2021, but as far as the raw amount of new things to do, how many hours of new and additional activities they added to the game this year, it's probably the smallest out of the game's three years thus far. The first few months we largely saw quality of life updates, again super solid, but not really a bunch of new things to do, just underlying improvements for the game. The middle of the year we did see some of that new stuff the Steel Rain update as what was probably the biggest update of the year. And then of course, just recently we get the Fallout Worlds update, which for a lot of people is just a miss, a feature that many aren't going to entertain or use too widely, but I just talked about that completely in that video, so I'll leave it at that. And as far as the rest of the year, Bethesda just announced that there's only two updates left, one being a bug fixing and a quality of life update again, and then finally one that will add in the new event for Star Legendaries and seemingly 
apparently there's a small Halloween event in the works. So the, the year still isn't over. Again, the game does have two more updates. When you look at what we know and what the calendar shows for the rest of the year, there really isn't a lot left on the horizon. And it's not like we had a ton of content come out already. But of course, one of the biggest things to stand out from this overall is that the story content was extremely short in 2021. Steel Rain was all we actually got this year. And it seemingly is all we will get this year. Not to say that Steel Rain wasn't enjoyable, but for me, it only actually took about three hours to complete. Four, if you really stretch things out or took your time with it. I don't think with Fallout 76, we are ever going to see a Wastelander size story edition again, which is a big disappointment for me. Because if you remember, when they were working on Wastelanders, there was this talking point where they described how they were setting up the framework for the future, implementing some of those backend systems that they would be able to build upon and use going forward for additional story content, which technically they did, but if you actually look at how much has been added, it's not that much. Since Wastelanders, we have really only gotten around six to eight hours of new story content with the two Brotherhood of Steel DLCs. And in my actual experience, how long it took me to beat both of them, it was only six hours of new content in total. And to put that into perspective, that will mean in around a year and a half of dev time, Fault 76 only got about six hours, or let's just stretch it out to eight hours of story content. That's not much in a year and a half time. And of course, looking ahead, it's not like new story contents around the corner. That'll likely technically end up being even longer before the next story-based content does drop. And it seems like one of the big issues around this, and one of the reasons Bethesda has been moving away from it is players just complete that content too quickly. So Bethesda is focusing more on repeatable content. This is things like daily ops, additional grinds like we have with legendary crafting, or even reliance on the season systems, with cosmetics and features being added to that. But at least for me, my single favorite time for Fallout 76 was when we actually had that story content intermingled with new gameplay systems. That was when Wastelanders dropped. For me, that was peak Fallout 76, and really nothing else has come close since then. And I mean, simply put, again, if you just look at the past year and a half and what they've actually been doing with the game, there's barely been any story content, and looking ahead, it doesn't really look like they have huge plans for large-scale DLCs again. As with Expeditions, it does seem like they will have some additional story content and lore, but it's going to be another gameplay loop similar to Daily Ops. It's not like this is going to be a Far Harbor-styled experience where you go to a new place and do some quests, but you're going to go to a new place and do missions, repeatable missions, it seems. Or at least that's what we have to go off of based off the descriptions released thus far. And on one hand, for me, this isn't inherently a bad thing. Although story content has been my favorite thing thus far with Fallout 76, it's likely because it is similar to what we have with other Fallouts. It's that true-to-style Fallout content that we know and love. But them trying something different isn't horrible. I'm definitely open to that. But it's not the only reason I'm a bit concerned as for what's next, because one of the other components of this is not only is the story content slowing, but some of the existing features are hitting their expiration date, at least for me. Fallout 76 has this core loop, in particular with the end game, which of course many of us did level up and get to the end game pretty quickly now. We've been there for years. But basically you grind for legendary gear, do events, do some boss fights for legendaries or some of the other rare or unique rewards, sometimes build a camp if that's your thing, and then complete challenges for season. At its core, that is what the end game is, and that core loop hasn't really gotten a ton of edits or additions. Things like daily ops and even legendary crafting to a lesser degree were definitely add-ons atop of that, things that you could now do in addition to the rest. But with the core of Fallout 76 really remaining so similar for so long, even as we get slight modifications or even just additions to daily ops, I find that they are getting stale even a bit quicker for me. And that's where I get to that mentality of these features almost hitting an expiration point. I'm just finding myself getting bored of them even when some of the twister updates are added because at its core, it's really remained so stable for years now. We have done daily ops so many times, or even just like how many times have I actually fought the Scorched Beast Queen, cleared West Tech, done the fight at Encrypted? It's been several years now for many of those core features, with not a lot of alternatives being added along the way that, even though now it might be with some new armors, some new weapons, or even four new armors or weapons or unique rewards, I find myself growing tired of some of those features a bit quicker because they haven't really been getting replaced or not a ton of additions have been added along the way. And now maybe that's just a me issue. It definitely could be. I still enjoy the game overall, but that core endgame gameplay
gameplay loop has become more stale to me as of late. And although it could just be a me problem, I don't think it is. I think this is a bit of a big issue underpinning the community right now, as you start to see more players kind of complaining about things, whether it be the lackluster season or just getting bored of the season grind overall as we're kind of hitting that breaking point, or just getting tired of the grind itself. Even though legendary crafting was a cooler, interesting feature, it kind of was just doing the same thing of fighting this mountain of RNG at a small chance at a good weapon. And this is all not to mention that along the way there have been several major feature removals. Not necessarily the biggest issue in the world, but in the three years since release, Fallout 76 has only gotten so many huge updates. And now we've really seen three of them get removed. That was Nuclear Winter, Survival Mode, and Vault Raids. And this all kind of brings me to a point where my hope is dwindling on the future of Fallout 76, in particular when it comes to specific features. I have long requested things like guilds, mod support, and even White Springs having an actual purpose, but if the game finally gets mod support 3.5 years in, I'll still enjoy it and play a ton of it, but I have a feeling I couldn't help but feel I wish this came earlier. And in particular, if they finally release mod support just a few months before their company releases another AAA large-scale RPG. Feels like of all the time to add mod support, that was a bad one. And that's still even just assuming it actually comes in 2022, because we still have no idea. Still, as we look ahead again, I don't say this all in a sense that I think Fallout 76 just is going to get abandoned. It just, I find myself focusing more and more just on the new content. The big new update to the game isn't getting me replaying the game again, it's getting me to retry some of that new content, and then just I'm so kind of tired or have overdone the older content that I really don't even touch it again. This game having a new project lead could definitely be a good thing, but it definitely seems like there is a fundamental issue around dev time. I don't think one project lead could completely change that. The rate at which this game gets content just feels too slow to me. I, mean, I think 2021 is a prime example of that. Now, maybe the game will see more investment. Maybe that is why this project lead is happening. Maybe they want someone else new to lead a larger and better team. We don't really know. But this leaves me wondering, well, how many games really started their big comeback or really took themselves to the next level in year four? I feel like that's pretty rare. Most games have hit their stride by then or don't. In some ways, it almost feels like Fallout 76 is approaching a maintenance mode, which might be completely wrong. It seems like Expeditions is this next big feature. The hybrid of some story content, kind of with repeatable content, but I think it's going to really be a focus on missions and smaller scale and more frequently released, or at least hopefully frequently released. But I have a feeling once Expeditions ends up getting announced, we're going to see disappointment on the community who were expecting something like a Fallout 4 DLC. And although Expeditions will take us off map, almost certainly establish new lore for their locations, of course, first and foremost with the pit, I don't think they're going to be that big. I don't think there's going to be that much new lore or that much story content intertwined with it. And again, for all these other factors I mentioned and established in this video, I'm a bit concerned as to what that all spells out for Fallout 76. It does definitely feel like Fallout 76's evolution is moving further and further away from story content. The game will definitely still get support, especially when it's the only Fallout game actively getting support by Bethesda. And really just overall, that's a summation of my thoughts. I'd really love to hear what you guys feel about all of this in the comments down below. Again, the project lead stepping down is what really caused me to reflect on some of this, but I'd love to know what you think. How do you feel about Fallout 76 in the past year or two? How do you feel about its future? I could definitely be completely wrong, and I do hope I am completely wrong. I don't want to be concerned about the future. Hopefully 2022 ends up being the best year ever for this game, and it definitely could be. But just thus far, with what's happened in 2021, it almost feels like things are going in the opposite direction. But time will tell, one way or another. And with that said, I thank you all again for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.